Hello from uh, the end of, of ACR 23 Convergence on, on Room Now. My name is uh, Eric Dye, and I'm a rheumatologist in Summit, New Jersey. And I'm delighted to be joined with Dr. Andrea Fava from Johns Hopkins. Um, and, and as we were just discussing, Dr. Fava has been all over the, the meeting this past week with, with a lot of um, great lupus research. Uh, so congratulations, first off, on, on uh, a lot of good presentations from the meeting. Thank you, Eric. Happy to be here. Yeah. Um, so I, I wanted to chat in particular about the oral abstract that you gave, abstract 0850, on urinary biomarkers. Um, and and in particular, you, you kind of start by talking about, you know, why we need these urinary biomarkers. So so the first question is just, why not just track the proteinuria in, in lupus and arthritis? I think that, that's kind of what's been the standard of care for a while. Yeah, I mean, so proteinuria is is a useful biomarker. Uh, it's the best we got, but it has many limitations, right? So um, the, the the first issue, even before proteinuria, is that lupus nephritis in most of the cases is asymptomatic, even when we use like a patient reported outcomes. So this is why every time a patient comes to clinic, we need to screen for something, and that something right now is proteinuria. However, uh, proteinuria cannot tell us if there is true inflammation in the kidney. It can be high when can, there is damage, like scar tissue. It can be high from hypertension or diabetes. And this is why we need to do kidney biopsies to figure out if a patient has lupus nephritis or not. And most importantly, if there's something that we can treat or not. And, and so also along the spectrum, you are very much aware that lupus nephritis comes with uh, all sorts of flavors and severity and can be a little bit of activity or a lot of activity. And the amount of proteinuria has no correlation with that. So that, that may be the issue. Uh, and this is why the diagnostic level, the current approach has some limitation. And if we could have something non-invasive, such as a urinary biomarker, uh, that could help us um, making better diagnosis, early diagnosis and uh, more informed treatment. Mm -hmm. and so tell me a little bit about your, your work with, with AMP and, and, and how you've been investigating finding these better biomarkers. Yeah, so the AMP is, is you know, the, this wonderful team of people that came together to uh, enroll patients across the United States uh, with lupus nephritis. And then we applied all the omics we could think of uh, to kidney tissue, urine, uh, blood, et cetera. And so uh, one of these omics was urine, urine proteomics, where we um, enrolled more than 200 patients with lupus nephritis undergoing a clinically indicated kidney biopsy. And we quantified in the urine uh, 1,200 different proteins. And then we followed this patient over time and we got another urine sample of three, six and 12 months. And meanwhile, the patients were being treated at the discretion of the rheumatologist. Now, uh, these patients were then classified as being responders or non-responders uh, after one year of treatment based on proteinuria and, um, and kidney function preservation. And then uh, for some of these patients, we also followed them for the following years. And now we're collecting three, four, five years follow-up data to see uh, what their kidney function did over time. And so we've done several studies. Uh, we looked at what are the biomarkers that at the time of diagnosis are helpful to uh, identify patients that have uh, more aggressive lupus nephritis, so the class three and four that we call proliferative. And we found many. And then we looked how these biomarkers changed uh, and how well, I mean, how good these biomarkers are to predict response to treatment. And we found several, uh, we had several in interesting results that we reported last year. And now we have a preprint out and the manuscript hopefully will come out in the next month. Uh, we have, for example, biomarkers that when they go down as soon, I mean, as early as three months, they can predict uh, a response status at one year much better than proteinuria. We also identified uh, biomarkers that associate with uh, the degree of activity, meaning like histological activity, and also biomarkers of histological chronicity. Uh, and then we wanted to take a step forward this time, but I don't want to jump ahead. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you lead <laughs> the conversation. No, I, I think you're doing great. So, um, so it's interesting that there's all these different biomarkers that it, it's not just 
you know, lupus or not lupus, it's activity, it's chronicity. It, it sounds like, are there some that are more prognosis, some that are more responsiveness to treatment that that we're, we're looking at? Well, we are trying to keep it, to keep the story simple, congruent, and grounded in, uh, in biology. So uh, when you look for biomarkers, when you have all these many predictors, you can identify all sorts of things. But we, what we are seeing is a theme. We, the theme that we are seeing is that there is a group of biomarkers in the urine that nicely correlate with the degree of inflammation in the kidney. So if you have proliferative versus membranous, they are higher. If you have higher histological activity as compared to lower histological activity, they are higher. So there are markers of true inflammation. And what we see uh, is that these are the same markers that go down at three months in response to treatment in patients who ultimately are classified as responders. So what this is telling us is that effective immunosuppression is successful at reducing inflammation in the kidney. And so the same biomarkers of histological activity go down at three months, predicting response in one year. Now, when you look at the um, pathways that these biomarkers are hinting at, these are markers of inflammation, of the cellular uh, inflammation. In particular, we see a macrophage activation, but very strongly we see neutrophil degranulation. And we also see this interleukin-16, which is a, um, a cyto is one of the most common inflammatory cytokines found in uh, lupus nephritis. We discovered that a few years ago, and, uh, and that is expressed in most immune cells in the kidney. So these markers are high at the beginning, and they go down in people who are responding. But those who are not responding to immunosuppression, these biomarkers stay elevated. Mm -hmm. And it looks like when you showed this area under the curve of, of the predictiveness, it showed that you know the IL sixteen definitely definitely stood out, but it was really in combining these together that we, um, looking at at a totality of, of a couple of biomarkers might give us the clearer picture of, of yeah. likelihood to respond. Yeah. So these so these biomarkers taken seeing uh, I mean uh, in isolation they work very well. I mean some of them in predicting response at the near under the curve of ninety one, but when you start combining them together, this is where you truly uh, in increase the power. And I can only imagine what was going to happen once we have a nice set of biomarkers and we combine them to anti DNA complement hematuria proteinuria. When you start taking the person into context. I, I, I am confident that we're going to get a very strong prediction uh, that will really approximate to repeating the, the kidney biopsy. Now, the study that we showed this time is a study of long-term prediction, right? So because we, in clinical trials and in clinical guidelines, in clinical practices is informed by guidelines, we say, well, treat patients and achieve a proteinuria target. But hey, we've been talking about how proteinuria is not a good, I mean, it's not a perfect biomarker. So you want to achieve low proteinuria, but ultimately, why do we care? We care because we treat lupus nephritis to save kidneys. Lupus nephritis, if not treated uh, appropriately, uh, can lead 20% uh, of patients can lose their kidneys and up on dialysis or needing a kidney transplant. And so we said, well, why don't we skip proteinuria? Let's look in the future. Let's look at least three years in the future and let's see what the patient's who lose kidney function and who don't. And then we hypothesized that you lose kidney function because you are not successful at removing inflammation in the kidney, right? So I give you mycophenolate plus other medication. And if after six or 12 months, this inflammation is still there. That means that this inflammation is still destroying the kidney and therefore you will lose kidney function. This is also substantiated by repeat biopsy study. And so we looked at six and 12 months in the urine at biomarkers that would indicate a parallel inflammation in the kidney. And uh, our hypothesis was confirmed. We found that the persistence of these biomarkers of in intrarenal inflammation at six or 12 months predicted GFR loss, so kidney function loss at three years, and in particular, interleukin-16, but also CD163 and the uh, uh, proteinase 3, which is PR3, the famous target of ANCAS, the persistence of these biomarkers at six and 12 months strongly predicted 
uh, loss of kidney function at three years. I, I think it's just fantastic. Um, I, it just as as we said, there's just not a good way to track these patients right now. And and uh, if we could get part of the information that that we gleaned from repeat kidney biopsies, if we could do that that liquid biopsy and get information to track these patients, would really just revolutionize how we're treating for our patients. Um, a, any other future direct? What what's your next step of, of what you would like to see? Uh, for this research, yeah. Listen, I, uh, I I love science, but I spend a lot of time with my patients. So I'm a clinician. I want something practical, right? We see a lot of incredible science, and at some point, we got some biomarker fatigue, right? Every year, there's some new biomarkers, and, and then after 20 years, we still use proteinuria, right? And, and maybe now the new thing is to do a lot of repeat kidney biopsy. So I want to translate this into something practical. So. Uh, we are. We have now a solid program. We are partnering with uh, a commercial partner to develop um, an assay that uh, hopefully will hit the clinics in, in in the next few years. So we are very excited about that. Uh, we, we just announced a collaboration. So uh, you know, in the in the academia and the research setting, we are great at coming up with good ideas, but then making them practical. Sometimes we need the help <laughs> of, of of others, and so. Uh, th this is where we're going. So we we're hoping to get a, a practical assay in, in, in the next couple of years that uh, we could eventually employ, uh, not only in clinical trials, because th there is a dire need for better endpoints, but also in, in, in clinical practice to aid with diagnosis, aid with monitoring of treatment, uh, aid to decide when it's safe to stop uh, immunosuppression or when do we need to increase immunosuppression? You know, there is a third of patients that despite achieving complete remission without proteinuria, they will continue to acquire kidney damage. And then when you do a kidney biopsy in these patients, even without proteinuria, there's a lot of them that still had active lupus nephritis. So what if we could just have a urine test to tell us that? I, I really hope that uh, we're going to have that in a few years. Yeah, and it was just fantastic research, and, and we're looking forward to see this translate over. So I, I appreciate you so much for your time, and I know everything that you know is on demand now on on ACR, and so you can tune into to your abstract and and uh, Dr. Celia Ida or Ida Cecilia um, had that great plenary session on the PR three antibodies and, and lupus arthritis. So there's just fantastic information from from this convergence. Yeah, um, I, I, thank you. Okay. Yeah, no, no. If, if if you have time, I mean, uh, the the plenary session from uh, Doctor Doctor Chalia was fantastic. Which found this uh, well, not the antibodies, but actually the actual protein in the urine, the PR three yeah. secretion. So the, 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 this new player in lupus nephritis. So uh, who knows where that will get us? So so very fascinating times. Yeah, but thank you so much for the time. I appreciate it. Of course, thank you, Eric. All right, take care. Bye bye. Tune into Room Now for more coverage on ACR 2023.